morning. It's Sunday, August 14th. And the U.S. Postal Service just made a very unusual announcement. They announced that starting in October, they will be adding a peak season rate to mail and packages sent out. This rate increase, according to the USPS, is needed. It will provide the agency with the revenue to cover extra costs in anticipation of the peak season volume. Now, the post office didn't exactly explain the expenses that they are undergoing, the extra costs. But we know that the price of fuel and the price of labor has risen considerably over the past year. Now, most of you know that I spent seven and a half years as a postal employee working my way through college. And I have a feeling for that department, even though it wasn't always the greatest place in the world to be working. But it helped me get where I ended up in life. So I have Rachmanis, so to speak, on what goes on in the post office. And I want to give you a few facts about the post office that I don't think many people know. Louis DeJoy, who is the postmaster general, has said that inflation has hit the nation hard and the postal service has not been able to avoid that impact. So I want to tell you the facts. The postal service employs 600,000 That's the third largest employer in the country behind Walmart and Amazon. It provides its services to over 160 million homes, businesses, and other delivery points. In fact, it delivers mail to seven families that live in the Grand Canyon, and it delivers that mail on the back of donkeys. And every rural delivery in this country loses money. They don't make a dime when they have to go several hundred miles out of the way to deliver packages to people in remote locations. So this is very difficult to be considered in any way, shape, or form a money-making enterprise. The post office is an independent branch of government that exists as part of the executive branch of government. That means it has nothing to do with Congress, nothing to do with the Supreme Court or any of the justice systems. It's run by a board of governors who elect the CEO. Right now, there are six governors with three vacancies. But I don't want to talk about how it's governed. I want to talk about how it's financed. The post office does not receive any money at all from the government. It's an independent entity, which means the only way that it earns money is by basically selling stamps. You pay for postage, and whatever you pay for postage allows that package or piece of mail to get delivered. Now, I remember when I was a kid, a postcard could have been three cents, and the stamp was maybe a nickel. Well, right now, the stamps are 58 cents, and I think they're going to be raised to 60 cents soon. And packages and posts and things like that are charged based upon the weight and the distance. There are big charts that the post office puts out that tells you how much it's going to cost to send any type of package anywhere in the country. And believe me, if you're paying 30 or $40, but you're having this package delivered by donkey to the Grand Canyon somewhere, or to some rural location in Montana or Nevada or Wyoming, the post office is not making money on that delivery. And the post office has to bear the costs, of not only the personnel, but the materials that are needed by the personnel, you know? cars, trucks, expensive equipment for sorting the mail, all of that, they have to figure out a way to raise money to keep all of this stuff going. And the government, as I said before, does not contribute a dime to the post office. So the post office makes enough money off of the postage and the stamps and everything to cover its basic expenses. 
but its pension and retiree health care liabilities have pushed the post office into the red. The post office has re- operated at a loss since 2007. Now, add to this problem the rise of email and digital communications. And the post office has seen a decline in first-class mail from 103 billion pieces in 2000 to just 55 billion pieces in 2019. So imagine that, they lost 50% of their mailing volume and their first class volume and they have to stay in business and they have to pay their retirees and they have to pay the health care for their retirees. That's a terrific burden and they're not getting a dime from the U.S. government taxes collected. They're not getting a dime from the government. And on top of that, we got the FedEx and the UPS, you know, the United Parcel Service, delivering packages. So the post office loses that revenue, too. And Amazon has their own fleet. So that's more money that the post office is losing. So really and truly, they are stuck in a business that has had a severe decline in the last 20 years. So it doesn't surprise me that they choose the holiday season to raise rates because their market share in the package delivery has dropped way down along with the mail. And I have to also say that the people who run the post office, the governorship or whatever it is, that committee, are not the brightest and forward-thinking people in the world because in my mind, the post office, the U.S. postal system, should have controlled email and the internet. They should have taken a leading role in the beginning of that piece of our computer evolution. And if they had control of that, they would be making enough money to take care of all of their debts that have been imposed upon them, the retirement funds, the health care, etc. So poor vision is a major piece of the problem. And they have to deliver less mail to more addresses than ever existed before. So I leave you with that this morning. A gigantic mess on a noble service. Take care. Bye.